I was fortunate in that uh, I joined the Air Force National Guard right after high school while I was going to college. And so through that experience, I uh, became a school teacher and a hydraulic mechanic. While I was finishing my degree, my Air National Guard unit asked me if I'd be interested in becoming a fighter pilot. Of course, I said yes. And so I went to pilot training for 18 months with a leave of absence and uh, came back as an F-100 pilot. Shortly thereafter, I started working as a subject matter expert at the Wright, Wright Patterson Air Force Base Laboratories to help develop new cockpits for the future. And so through that activity, working on the base in the laboratories, doing many uh, uh, experiments to design uh, new GUIs for F-22s and B-2s and such in the future, uh, I started to generate my own next job, business development. And so I uh, started to visit the other uh, laboratories on the base. I started to work for larger and larger companies, helping them win new business. And uh, through that process, I was asked if I would be interested in joining the ITSIC conference. And of course I said yes. And so through that process, uh, I've been in the ITSIC uh, subcommittees and the senior leadership position. And I'm uh, now volunteering to come back and uh, help with protocol. It's been uh, 27 years. Yes, yeah, so the fidelity of modeling and simulation has significantly improved over the last 40 years that I've been in this business. And uh, it's due in part by, you know, the uh, ability to compute more uh, inventions that were made by small startup businesses and very large, also very large government contracts. So that now the uh, virtual reality that we enjoy and we sometimes take for granted uh, is as realistic as it can be and, and it's just like the real the real world and other parts of fidelity also were in the uh, the modeling part of vehicles and the control systems and weapons and all the things that it it takes to put together uh, a very high fidelity simulation uh, which can actually uh, be at the level of fidelity that uh, governments have decided that they can not operate the vehicle or fly the aircraft, but do the simulation and train to a level of uh, capability sufficient, saving uh, lots of dollars and some lives. With uh, the new technologies and secure networks, we can deliver training to any soldier, sailor, airman, or marine, or civilian, uh, no, no matter where they may be. Uh, training uh, delivery, on uh, tablets and smartphones, very portable devices, so that uh, no matter where you are and what you're doing, you can always be learning. You can uh, get your certifications, you can advance yourself personally, you can uh, be a better uh, warfighter. And so uh, you, uh, you have that ability 24-7. Uh, so my advice to people that are interested in uh, coming into the virtual training industry, which is what I characterize what we do, uh, is to take advantage of all the opportunities that you may be presented and volunteer, like I did, to join an organization that gives you opportunity, whether it be military or civilian. Or take those experiences and build upon them. Always try to do your best because those actions will be uh, observed and you'll be given better opportunities.